Hey guys, I'm from the Blanks. Welcome to another NPC. So, um, Nintendo just had another Nintendo Direct. It was sort of sudden. It was like, hey, this is happening tomorrow. And people were like, okay, well, we just had a, like, a mini Direct. So are we expecting any, like, bombshells? And Nintendo did really, really well. Uh, they showed off a lot of things, not all of which um, I'm super excited about. But to be honest, um, with the Directs and E3s and something like this, especially with Nintendo, is... Um, I get excited even for things I'm not excited about, if that makes any sense. I, I get excited when big games get announced for the Switch, even if I'm not going to play it. Um, like, if Grand Theft Auto was going to be announced for the Switch, that did not happen, so don't get your hopes up. Um, but, like, I don't really care about Grand Theft Auto. I rarely play them, and I think they're just okay. But that would be something we're celebrating because it's it's that on the Switch. It, it, it means there's more... People who are going to play the Switch, there's more interesting things, there's variety. So I, I wanted to do this one live like I did the last one, but um, I didn't get home in time from work to do that. Uh, it started at 6, I got off work at 5.30, uh, and my wife wanted to do groceries, which makes sense because we had a storm, so it's like just in case, you know, we don't go anywhere tomorrow or something. So anyways, um... Yeah, let's get into it. So the Direct started with um, 3DS things mostly, uh, and the first thing they showed off was a really great thing, and that's uh, WarioWare Gold. I'm a huge fan of the WarioWare games. There's, there's something about them that, like, it's Nintendo's creativeness all in, like, tiny, tiny chunks. If you haven't played a WarioWare game, it's basically, you have, instead of mini games, you have micro games, and the games last literally four to five seconds, and it's all about how fast can you react to what's going on, and every micro mini game or whatever the hell is crazy wacky and super different, and it's all, <clears throat> it's all under, like, a Wario aesthetic. Um, they redid Wario's world to inclu include a bunch of new characters. Wario has a new look. Um, it's phenomenal. Um, if you watched my Who Should I, Who Should They Add to Smash Brothers, Jimmy, from WarioWare was like my number one guy. So like, that's incredible. A lot of the games are repeats from the older ones. Uh, there's like 300 micro games. So I'm assuming it's like a best of with some other things. I don't care, WarioWare is just awesome. That's coming out in August. That's pretty cool. Next up we have Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers. Um, I forgot the name of the game, but there was Dylan the Armadillo. Uh, he had a game a couple years ago, and I heard it was really good, and uh, I never really checked it out, which is kind of a shame, but like he was in uh, Smash Brothers for like, uh, an assist trophy or something. He was he was kind of just mentioned in there a little bit, and it's really cool to see something else. I don't even know if um, if, if if the Dylan games are like made by Nintendo or not, to be honest. But they look pretty cool, and this one looks really interesting, really good. Um, it also looks like it's a full fledged game, or at least has the graphics of a full fledged game. So that's pretty cool. Could be just an eShop title, though. I, I'm pretty sure the first one was just an eShop title. Um, so it's pretty cool to see it get bigger. Next up, we got Mario and Luigi's Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. This one's... I don't want to knock on this because I actually really love this game, but I think it's really lame that two back-to-back -back Mario and Luigi games are, are remakes. And and the remake for Superstar Saga was really, really well done. But, like, this one was already on the DS. It was on the it was the last DS Mario and Luigi game. So just kind of make it on the 3DS. It's like, really? Do we really need that? Like, it looks better graphically, sure, but, like, not all that much, except for, like, the 3D sections. Um, I do find it funny, and I'm glad that they uh, skipped Mar and Luigi Partners in Time. I, I think that's the worst one. Um, it really didn't strike me as a good game, but like the rest of them were really good. Superstar Saga, um, Bowser's Inside Story, Dream Team, they were all great. I haven't played Paper Jam yet, though I really should. Um, but I think it's a little lame that yet another Mar and Luigi game is just... A, a remake, and it's not even available till next year, so it's like, geez, you could be making an actual Mario & Luigi game. And to be honest, I, I sort of want the next Mario & Luigi game, like the next main Mario & Luigi game, to be on console, on the Switch. Because the Switch is basically the next, like, handheld for Nintendo. So, next up we got more on Detective Pikachu, um, and we got to see the uh, the Pikachu Amiibo, which we all knew about. Um, this is weird, because I remember when they announced this, I thought it was the stupidest idea ever. And then the idea that he talks, like, this is even stupider. Then I heard him, and it was like, oh my god, he's a discount Danny DeVito. That being said, this trailer actually makes me super interested in the game. It looks pretty cute, the writing's not that bad. I like mystery games? I don't know, I want to try this. I, I honestly thought, like, this one's about to come out. And I thought this would be the 3DS's swan song, I guess. I kind of thought Metroid Return of Samus uh, was going to be that. But then they have this one, and it's it's clearly, they tried a lot. I mean, it's, it's a gorgeous game for the 3DS. And I'm, I'm super interested in this. This, to me, was going to be what would end the 3DS. But according to this Direct, there is so much coming out 
that I, I can't believe how much the 3DS still has life in it, which is super surprising. And, you know, I, I really thought that'd be it for the 3DS. Uh, but it's not. And speaking of being dead, um, Luigi's Mansion is coming back to the 3DS. I, again, would have loved to see this on the Switch, but this actually makes a lot of sense for a 3DS title. Um, it's a slightly better looking version of the GameCube game with more on model characters. Um, Luigi looked a little wonky in the original GameCube version. It was still like really pretty. I remember seeing it for the first time and I couldn't believe it that that was in game. Um, but Luigi looked a little wonky compared to what he looks like now. And having a remake is pretty cool, and it probably runs off the um, uh, Haunt Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon or whatever it was called, which I never played, which I really should. So it probably runs off that engine. Um, whatever, I'll play it. Any excuse to play Luigi's Mansion again, though, again, I should probably play Dark Moon, because it's not really fair that I'm just playing the remake and not the, you know, new, regular game. Alright, so with all the uh, 3DS stuff out of the way, Nintendo focuses on the Switch for the rest of the thing, which is like, we're only six minutes into the actual uh, Direct, so it's pretty cool that a lot of this is about the Switch. First up will be a Kirby Star Allies, which is, again, just about to come out, and uh, it looks great. It's a Kirby game. I mean, I've been anticipating this for a while, because I, I just, I enjoy the classic Kirby games. That being said, I was surprised to have this many, well, surprises in this. Yes, everyone knew that King Dedede, uh, Bandana, Waddle Dee, and Meta Knight were going to be playable characters. They showed off a little bit. But they showed that they're going to be more friends as um, DLC, free DLC, as, as the game goes on. Uh, Rick Kynan Koo from uh, Cruise Dreamland 2 and uh, and 3, Gooey from Kirby's Dreamland 3, and Marks from Kirby's Superstar are all going to be playable. And that's... Like, a little thing, but that's really cool to me because these characters are, like, super iconic to me. Um, and that makes me think they're going to put a lot of nostalgia on this one, which, I mean, the Kirby games have been doing a lot lately, but I want to see things like... I know I complain about this, I complain about this every single time, but uh, Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright, bring them friggin' back, but we could see Lolo, Lolo, La La La, like, we haven't seen Krako in a little while, but, like, not playable, but just in the game in general. So I'm super excited for Kirby Star Allies, which is coming out, like... Wow, it's it's next Friday. That's so, so soon now. They showed off uh, Okami HD for the Switch, which is very cool. That came out on PS4 and Xbox One either last year or the year before, I forget. And Okami is one of those games that has a bigger fan base um, now than it did when it came out, which is such a shame. This game, I don't think, did really well at all on the original uh, GameCube. Or, was it the game? PS2. PS2, sorry. And... No one really cared, and then it kind of started getting big. So I find it really a shame that instead of getting a new Okami, we just keep getting the same one. But whatever, I mean, that's the way it is. I, I think it's a little lame that being on the Switch, it doesn't also come with uh, Okami Den, which is the the DS sequel, uh, which I have no idea if it was any good or not. Maybe it was terrible. Maybe that's what killed the series. I have no idea. But whatever, an excuse to finally play Okami and to play it in, to completion, which I never did. Uh, that's that's a good, re good enough reason for me to pick it up. Next up, we have Sushi Striker, The Way of the of Sushido, um, which doesn't interest me at all. It, it's it's cute, and it makes me want sushi, because I really like sushi, and I haven't had sushi in a while. But it's, I don't know, yeah, there's a little story, and it's cute. And it, to me, it looks like a tablet game, like something you'd get for a couple bucks on the tablet. I mean, it might be super, super good and, like, really well realized. It just doesn't interest me, and that's just me. Whatever, hey, if you're going to get it, then have fun. Have a blast, man. Next up, we got more on Octopath Traveler, and it's pretty clear that that's its official name. It was called Project Octopath Traveler with, like, the whole, you know, asterisk at the bottom going, like, well, this this is a, a name in development. Now they're just, whatever, it's Octopath Traveler, which I think is a stupid friggin' name, but whatever. The game looks incredible. They showed off two new characters, uh, the Merchant Tressa and uh, the Apothecary Alfin. Uh, the game looks just awesome. It's beautiful as ever, and it finally got a release date of July 13th, which isn't that far away. Uh, there is a demo on the Switch. If you haven't tried it already, please do. You get to play as two of the characters, uh, Primrose and I forget the other one. He's the, like, warrior or whatever. But the game looks really, really cool, and I'm super looking forward to it. Uh, pretty cute um, special edition. I'm not a big special edition guy. I think it... <laughs> I think there are a lot of money for not a lot of what you get for it. I'd rather get game stuff, I guess. I don't know. I'm from a generation where there was no such thing as, as collector di collector's edition of games. And I don't know. To me, I want a game. I don't want a statue. I don't want... Like, I don't mind books. I like books. Not art books. I like development books. Um, but other than that, 
Clear Traditions don't really do it for me, but hey, this game looks incredible. I'm definitely picking it up. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes looks interesting. As a guy who wasn't at all interested in the first two, I, I passed them up like really, really fast. I was like, this isn't for me. The idea of this one's really, really, really cool because like Travis goes into like old games and it looks really, really interesting. And I have no idea how good the first two was. I heard the first one was incredible, but there were like a lot of problems, like just little things that made it not a 10 out of 10. And I haven't heard much about the second one, but this looks really good. It's not super graphically impressive, but I, I don't think that's the point of, of, a, you know, of, of No More Heroes at all. So I do own the two of them, so I should probably play them, but this looks actually pretty cool and has definitely gotten me uh, interested in the series. So good job on them for that. Dark Souls. Uh, now Dark Souls, <laughs> when they announced that last year, I could not believe was it last year or was it like early this year? Whatever. When they announced that Dark Souls was coming out for the Switch, that blew me away. Then the second they announced that it was also going for PS4 and Xbox One, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So they just decided to remake it or remaster it and put it on the consoles. That makes a lot more sense to me than just straight up bringing it for the Switch exclusively again. Um, but whatever, uh, it looks really good. There's going to be a beta for it, which is really cool. It has an amiibo, which is super interesting. Like, the praise the praise the sun. I'm like, that's adorable. I really like that. Uh, I already own Dark Souls, and I've played it. Um, I haven't gotten past Dark Souls 1. I haven't played Dark Souls 2, 3, or Bloodborne. Um, but I, I could restart with this one. Um, maybe we'll start with Demon Souls first, and then play this one, and then kind of go on. But really cool. They then showed off some friggin' things about the Nintendo, my Nintendo thing. Oh, God. Just painful. They went through it really fast. It was like, oh, by the way, you can get coins and it's not even close to worth it. So whatever, I don't care. Um, they did a, a big, big, big thing for Mario Tennis Aces. And weirdly enough, during the mini direct, this was actually the thing that got me the most excited because I actually really like the Mario Tennis games when they're not shitty, like they were on the uh, uh, GameCube and the Wii U. But weirdly enough, I like the... Um, I like the N64 one. But I like the, the 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 handheld ones, like for the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance, because they had a little story mode. And they did say that this was a half story mode, but judging by what they showed off, I don't think it's going to be an RPG story mode like everyone was kind of hoping for. Like they were like, oh, since the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, like no, Nintendo, I think you're stretching the truth a little bit there. I don't think that's how it's going to be. I think it's going to be a more of a like Mar like Paper Mario Sticker Star, where you have world and you just kind of go to one. There's a tiny little story of like, Mario, you can't get past me unless you play tennis. Okay, I'll play tennis. And then you just play tennis and then you just go on. So I don't think there's gonna be like equipment. I don't think there's gonna be like an actual arching story with like, I don't know, cool surprises about who's gonna be there. I don't know, I really like the way they did the Game Boy games. I don't think this is what they're gonna do with it. That being said, I'm still interested in it. And the extra mechanics they showed off, like the zone shot and the zone speed, racket break, all that, looks pretty interesting. I'm definitely gonna try it out. I, I need a good Mario Tennis game, to be honest. Next up, we have Captain Toad uh, on the Switch and the 3DS. I think it's lame that they're making it for the Switch and the 3DS. I, I'm, I'm... I'm against, I know that sounds weird, but I'm against the idea of a game being made for both a handheld and a full-fledged console. It's like, well, what's the point, I guess? And I know the point is that if you don't have one of the systems, you can still play the game, but like, I don't know. I, I, I find it weird because it destroys the reason for, for the 3DS. It's like, well, if you want a console game, get a console. But whatever, um, I loved Captain Toad. Captain Toad was one of my favorite games in, in I think it was 2015. I, I just freaking adored it. I played it so much during the Christmas uh, time. It was like my, it was my relaxing game. So I, I am looking forward to playing it again. And it, this is one of those things that I actually want to let's play. I've been wanting to let's play Captain Toad for a while. Like, because I like puzzle games, and I think this one's just a really cute one. So, you know, if that's what you guys want to see, let me know. Um, I'll probably do it anyways, regardless of what you say, because uh, I do what I want to do, because I'm an asshole. But yeah, Captain Toad, Treasure Trackers, I'm okay with that. Next up, we got, like, this... I did not expect it. Undertale on the Switch. I'm actually a pretty big Undertale fan. Not one of the crazy ones, uh, but, like, I like the jokes. I like the memes. Uh, I, of course, like the game itself. Have a soundtrack. Um, have a physical copy of it on the PS4. I really liked Undertale when that came out. That was... Just a great game. Um, I really enjoyed it, loved the characters, played it a billion times on, on genocide mode and pacifist mode. And playing again, yeah, I'm okay with that. And on the go, yeah, I'm okay with that too. Um, I hope it's not too expensive, because I mean, at this point, Undertale's gotten pretty cheap. So I'm hoping it's not like a $50, $60 game, but knowing Nintendo, you never know. Also, whether or not it's coming out just as eShop or if it's coming out physically, so who knows. But whatever, Undertale, that's pretty cool. Though, weirdly enough, as, as surprising as Undertale was, more surprising was Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. 
I, I don't know why I'm that surprised Crash Bandicoot games have been on Nintendo systems before, but this is like the PlayStation era of, of, of Crash Bandicoot games. So I find it just really, really crazy that they're both, or sorry, both, all three are going to be on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to get it for the Switch. Um, it's the same with Dark Souls where, like, I'll get them for cheap, but I I already have these games, and I have them on, like, newer systems. Like, I have Crash Bandicoot on the PS4, so I'm not really going to get it again on the Switch for no real reason. But, I mean, whatever. It's just cool to see. And who knows? This, this is the closest thing to having... Maybe Crash Bandicoot joins Smash Brothers, because that is one I would not be against seeing. Little Nightmares is coming out for the Switch. I know literally nothing about this game. Sorry. Moving on. South Park the Fractured But Whole. Um, again, something I really didn't expect, which is kind of funny, because the first South Park game was exclusive on a Nintendo console. I don't know if it was the first, actually, but the, the terrible one for the N64. So they've had South Park before, so again, this shouldn't be surprising, but it is. Um, it also sucks because it comes out, like, later than the other versions, uh, on the other consoles. And I'm kind of sick of that happening, but it, it seems to be happening less and less. We're getting less ports, so we're getting more just games releasing on all three consoles. Whatever, um, uh, again, this is just like the other two. I have it on another system, so I'm, I'm not going to rebuy on the Switch. But it is cool that it's there for people who want to play it. I got a buddy who only plays Nintendo consoles, and he's been wanting to play this. So it's just, it's cool. I'm okay with it. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition now finally has a release date of May 18th. Hyrule Warriors is a great Warriors game. I liked it way better than Fire Emblem Warrior. And um, I think it's really cool that it's, it's getting all the DLC and stuff. I super called it, by the way. I don't know why it took them this long, but this is one of those things as soon as Mario Kart 8 was announced, it's like, oh, there's going to be ports? Hyrule Warriors, all the DLC, and it is coming out. I haven't touched Hyrule Warriors since the Switch was announced because I knew this was going to happen, so I made sure not to do anything with the game so I can start over completely with all the DLC on the Switch. I'm totally getting it. ARMS is getting some stuff, uh, that's really cool, and by stuff, it's not, not the game itself, but they're having, um, uh, an online tournament, which is really cool, I'm not, I like ARMS, it's a game that I couldn't get into, but I love a lot about it, it's like Splatoon, I don't really care about Splatoon, but I love the idea of it, so, them getting more stuff, I'm not gonna complain about it, but, whatever, Splatoon is actually getting, uh, a bunch of free stuff, it's also getting a, a full-on paid expansion pack, which looks really really cool. It's fully single player, I guess, is what they showed off. It looks really interesting. Um, again, I haven't played Splatoon yet, so, like, other than a couple matches with the first one, so, whatever, it's, but if they make, like, an Ultimate Edition with all the characters, or all the characters, all the expansion stuff, I'll definitely pick it up. I'm, I'm more of a single player guy anyway, so this makes more sense to me than just regular Splatoon 2. So, whatever. It looks pretty cool. The single player aspect looks really nice, so. And that was it, except of course this is Nintendo, and they either end on a super disappointing note, or they end with a random gigantic note. And that was the reveal of Smash Brothers for Switch. And, um, there's a lot to say about this. Um, really it's, it's, is it a new game, or is it a port? Because there's, there's lots of things pointing either way. Um, the really, really dark style of aesthetics, um, Mario and Link, like, behind, like in front of the fire burning, the way the, the logo itself um, appeared, like the Smash Brothers text, makes it feel it's very different from Smash Brothers for Wii U 3DS, which had a much, much brighter and bouncier feeling than this one did. But at the same time, the fact that this is coming out this year, 2018, to me says that the game is probably going to be a port, like an Ultimate Edition, but it's hard to tell. It, it's literally impossible to tell right now because the only thing that we know that's new is the fact that the Breath of the Wild version of Link is there and not Twilight Princess Link, and the fact that we have the, Split, the Splatoon Inklings, which, again, if you saw my Who Should They Add to Smash Brothers, was the most obvious one um, to add to that series. So to me, this very well could be a brand new game. It also very well could be a port. The thing is, Mario Odyssey was announced the year Odyssey came out, and that game was giant. That game was huge. So the idea of just saying there's no way this could be a real Smash Brothers, a full full new Smash Brothers game because it's coming out this year and it was announced this year, is short-sighted. Um, it very well could be this year. Nintendo is surprisingly good at keeping things a secret. Mario Maker was a huge thing, and then they announced it like months before it came out. So that's, I don't know, it could really go either way. So. It being a port would be okay with me. Also, I didn't really play Smash Brothers for the Wii U and, and 3DS very much. I played the shit out of Brawl, and I played the shit out of Melee. 
I didn't play all that much for the Wii U and the, and the 3DS. I don't really know why. Um, it's not that it's a bad game. I really enjoyed it. I just couldn't get into it as much. I don't know. Maybe it was where I was at life. Uh, maybe things were going on in my personal life that I just couldn't get into it. And and I want the ability to try again. I mean, hell, I didn't even get... Well, no, I, I got some of the DLC characters, but I didn't get a lot. Like, I never even got Cloud or Bayonetta or, or, or Corrin or anything. So, like, I'm, I'm still, like... I, I'm I'm still like I'm not familiar with the new Smash Brothers very much. So if if it's a port, I'm okay with that. If it's a new one, I'm super okay with that too. I just think it's really 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 short afterwards, and there's so much that they need to fix with the Smash Brothers franchise, which is probably gonna be another NPC that I'll do one day. Anyways, guys, that was the Nintendo Direct for March 8th, 2018. Um, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Almost everything, almost, almost everything, was something to get excited about. Even if it, was something, if it wasn't something you were going to play yourself, it's worth getting excited about. What was your favorite part? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and guess it's Smash Brothers, because everyone's, it's going to be Smash Brothers. That's like having a giant, you know, a little, a little, um, Nintendo Direct, and then they showed off Metro Prime 4 at the end. Like, that's going to be the big thing that everyone's going to be excited about. But, tell me what you think. Tell me in the comments down below. And, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you like these NPCs where I just talk about shit for no reason. Sometimes they're events like Nintendo Direct. Sometimes they're just dumb things that I just want to talk about. And, uh, take care, guys. See you later.